Thank you all for being part of our 2017 commencement exercises of Rama Bible Training College. This is the 43rd graduating class of Rama. As we begin, let's have a word of prayer, please. If you would bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each one of these 270 graduates of Rama Bible Training College who are being honored here tonight. This night represents a culmination of effort, sacrifice, and determination on the part of these graduates. May they turn this world upside down. We thank you not only for the effort, sacrifices, and accomplishments that, they have, that have marked their paths to this point, but also for the destinies that lie before each one, for the divine purpose that calls them to walk boldly into the future, carrying faithfully the light that they have received. May they turn this world upside down. We thank you for the training that has been imparted to them. We rejoice knowing that as they apply what they have received, their lives as well as the lives of every individual they come in contact with will be changed dramatically. May they turn this world upside down. Tonight, these graduates stand here before a congregation. Tomorrow, they go forth to reach a generation. They will not go in their own strength or wisdom, but in the might and power of the Holy Ghost, relying upon the greater one who dwells in them. May they turn this world upside down. May they ever be mindful of the fact that no matter what challenges or circumstances they may have in life, they can truly do all things through Christ who strengthens them. May they turn this world upside down. May each of them be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. May they walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful to every good work. Get ready, world. They are going to turn you upside down. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You're going to turn the world upside down, amen? Are you ready to worship God in this place? Come on, here we go.
glorified. Risen, He's risen. King Jesus, King Jesus is risen. He's risen, forever glorified. Risen, He's risen. King Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Come on, shout it out. Aren't you thankful that you're a new creature in Christ tonight? Aren't you thankful that you're a new creature in Christ tonight? Oh, we praise you. You made us new creatures in you, Lord. We bless you tonight. We thank you, Lord. Oh, oh. Come on, sing it with us tonight. Sing, he that be, he that be in Christ. He's a new creature. Away, the old has passed. All things are All new. Things are new. Oh, we thank you, Lord, tonight. Sing, be that be in Christ. That be in Christ. He's a new creature. He's a new creature. He set us free from sin. He set me free. I got a fire burning with fear. I'm changed. I'm changed. I'll never, no, never, no, never. I'll never be the same. Set me free from sin. 
Before you're seated and greet somebody there around you. This is the 43rd time that I've stood before a sea of red. Men and women that have dedicated themselves to study for whatever destiny that God has for them. And I want to welcome all of you that have come to enjoy this time with all of these graduates. As I watch them march in, and I do it just about every year, I get tears in my eyes because the passion of my heart is to see people touched by the power of God. And every year as I see these students walking in, I know that there's another group that's going to set the world free from the devil's tyranny. So, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here to celebrate. But tonight in the audience is somebody I want to recognize, an educator, college president, Bible college president, minister of the gospel, and a true friend of mine, he and his wife, we went to Bible college together about 20 years ago. <laughs> I want to recognize Dr. Maurice Letnick and his wife, Marcy. Thank you for being here. God bless you guys. They have a, they have a nephew that's graduating in, in, from Rama, and I I haven't had the privilege, I mean, I've been in contact, but I hadn't had the privilege of actually physically being in contact with them in, what, 40 years, I guess, or more. <laughs> try 50, my wife says try 50. <laughs> We're not that old, are we, Maurice? <laughs> uh, but I am so glad to have them here, and I'm so glad to have all the rest of you here. I love to be able to have this graduation ceremony to be filled with all of the pomp and circumstance that it needs to have and the dignity, but I also want to have the Spirit of God because you can have all the dignity and all the pomp and circumstance and everything, but if you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't have anything. So I believe that stuff can be done in decency and in order with, with dignity and still have the move of the Spirit of God. So tonight as we enjoy this graduation exercise, let us invite the Holy Spirit in. 
to be in our midst, to minister to each of our hearts. And may each of us walk away with something that the Holy Spirit has ministered to our hearts that can be beneficial for us. Thank you for being here and welcome. At this time, I have the privilege to recognize and honor some of the people that are here tonight. Of course, our president, Reverend Kenneth W. Hagan, has already recognized these students who've come from all over this country and, Af and the world who are here tonight. And we, we have confidence that there will have many years, should Jesus tarry, of productive and fruitful years of life and ministry in the future. And it seems that each year the student body, this student body takes on a characteristics, a characteristic. I know that uh, when I graduated in 1984, uh, during that school year, Lester Summerall came to campus and told us that we were the winners. And so since then, several of us who are 1984 have declared we're the best class ever because we're the winners. You can't get any better than that. So we're the winners, these guys are not. We are, though. <laughs> but this class, the main characteristic about them is they are fearless. And so we will call them the fearless as they go forth. Amen? I want to recognize the families and spouses of all the graduates. Without your support and encouragement, many of our graduates would not be able to be here tonight. Along with the graduates, I would like to say thank you for all that you did to make it possible for the graduates to be here tonight. Graduates, let's thank our families with a big hand clap here. Thank you for all that you did. We want to recognize and give a big thank you to everyone in this audience and those around the world who faithfully support Rama Bible Training College financially over the years. You've made it possible for us to offer the excellent training that these graduates have received at a very affordable cost. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. We also want to recognize tonight the commitment and sacrifice that 11 of our graduates have made. They are here for representing six different countries. They are here as F-1 visa uh, uh, students, and uh, they have left their homeland to be here and be part of this program. And uh, they, are from, they are from Brazil, Canada, France, Nigeria, Norway, and, in Z and Zimbabwe. Would you graduates please stand that are from these nations that I, that I called? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We also have reserved section 121 for the family members. You may not all, but if you are a family member of one of these graduates, would you please stand at this time if you came to see your family members graduate. I know there's a group here from Brazil. Come over here. God bless you so much. Thank you for being here. Also, we want to recognize a special of our graduates here tonight. It's Oklahoma, folks. It does this all the time. Uh, we have among our graduates veterans of the armed forces of the United States of America. These veterans have served their country, and now they stand trained and ready to serve their Lord and Savior. Would all of our graduates who are veterans please stand now? Thank you for your service. God bless you. Finally tonight, it's my great privilege to recognize some of our graduating students who participated this year in our collegiate level athletic basketball program. Our Eagles men basketball team finished as the national champions of the Association of Christian College Athletics. This year during the season ending national tournament, they won three games in three days beginning with a hard-fought come-from-behind victory over, over Kansas Christian, 87-75. Next, they came back from a 15-point halftime deficit to defeat the host Ozark Christian College, 98-89. And then finally, the next night in the championship game, 
they defeated Trinity College 97-83. The team, the team was led by first team All-American and Ramah School of Student Ministries graduates, Dallas, uh, graduate Dallas Doku. First team All-American and ACCA Tournament MVP, second year graduate Tanner Gregorich. And second team All-American and second year graduate Chris DeLay. These young men received, received rewards and got recognition, but this was a team championship. Together with Coach Perry Shockley, Coach Stand Up over here, would all of those graduates who have participated on the men's team this year please stand? They're wearing their medals tonight. There's Coach Shockley up here. Let's give them a big hand clap. Congratulations, gentlemen. Now we're going to have some music from the Ramos School of Worship.
Amen. Our speaker tonight is no stranger to Rama. Dan Morrison graduated from Rama in 1982, and he's been serving in the ministry ever since. He was one of the first original Rama singers in band in 1982. Uh, that they traveled all over the United States with me and with Dad ministering and preaching and singing. He was there for three years. Then he went to back to his hometown, Norman, Oklahoma, and served in the youth ministry and the music ministry. In 1987, he joined the pastoral staff at Rainbow Bible Church and served in the areas of music, minister of music, worship leader, associate pastor, instructor in the school for over 18 years. In 2005, Dan and Jane and the five boys relocated to Mexico City where they served as dean of students at Rama, Mexico City. In 2006, he and the family assumed the pastorate at, in uh, Summit Church in Farmington, New Mexico and has been there for the last 11 years. I want you to give a good welcome to one of our own Dan Morrison. Danny. Praise the Lord. So good to be with you tonight. I want to give special thanks to President Kenneth Hagan and Mrs. Lynette Hagan, Reverend Craig Hagan, Dean Tad Gregrich, the faculty of Rainbow Bible College, and the parents family and friends of the class of 2017. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you for the warm welcome, hospitality, and the opportunity to share in this celebration with the Rama Bible Training College class of 2017. Is it all right if I start off with a story? The story is told about this, this young mother and her kids that uh, went out to eat one evening at McDonald's. She's standing there in line, and she notices this elderly couple that are placing their order. And she notices that all they order is one Happy Meal. And she orders for her, her kids and go back to her seats. And she's just watching, you know, this elderly couple as the gentleman very carefully splits the small mini burger and carefully splits the french fries and she just her heart is you know she's got a tug on her heart and she gets up out of her seat and goes over to the couple and says I notice you only order one meal may I be a blessing to you may I buy you another meal thinking that there's a need there and the gentleman says no no really it's fine for all of our married life we've always shared everything are you sure I would I'd be happy to please let me and she says no really fine we all of her married life, we've shared everything. And so she sits down with her children, and she just notices that the woman begins to eat her hamburger and eat her French fries. And, and the gentleman just sits there watching his wife eat away. And once again, she goes over and, please, sir, I, it's, please don't let pride stand in the way. May I buy you another meal? And once again, the gentleman says, thank you so much, but really, all of our married life, we've shared everything. And she says with sincerity, then what are you waiting for? And he says, I'm waiting for the teeth. <laughs> so is it okay if I just share everything with you tonight? You know, graduates, I remember sitting where you sit tonight uh, some 36 years ago as I part participated as a graduating student in 1981 and 1982. You say, what, what happened, Pastor Dan? Did you, did you lose your diploma? Why did you have to go twice? Mine was the last year, do you all remember, that was the last year that students could graduate twice. 
And so I remember that time. I was a part of that class. And uh, since that time, you know, we've learned that students need more than one year. Aren't you thankful for all the different programs that we have today? But, you know, when I graduated from Rama, you know, indulge me as we just kind of remember a little bit back to those days. I was 19 years old. Ronald Reagan was president and George Bush was vice president. The best picture that year was Gandhi with the best actor Ben Kingsley. Anybody remember those days? The top TV shows were Magnum P.I. starring Tom Selleck and a hospital show called ER, or, or excuse me, St. Elsewhere, and one of the longest running dramas on television called Dallas. The top songs for 1982 were Man Eater by Hall and Oates, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, Hard to Say I'm Sorry by Chicago, and Don't You Want Me by Human League. Those were the top songs. And, you know, me being in music, I, I knew those things. And as I thought about that, you know, I thought to myself, some of you are leaving tonight with the eye of the tiger. And others may be thinking, don't you want me? You know, as they're looking for opportunities for ministry. Don't you want me? And, you know, thinking back to myself in those years, I really didn't know what I was going to do as I graduated from Rama. I didn't have God's plan for my life on the radar yet. I was just happy to be here. Can anybody relate, graduates? And not only that, I, 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 I want to be honest, I faced thoughts of inadequacy. In my mind, as I looked around at the whole graduation experience, I thought to myself, you know, I don't have it all together like Benjamin. And who knows, he, he knows where he's going. And, and Megan, you know, she's got a ministry position waiting for her. And, and Jared, look at his confidence. And I looked at all the students around me. And in my estimation, I didn't even measure up to the graduates of the past. They were anointed. They were powerful. Who was I that I should join their ranks? Well, if you're honest with yourself, you may be thinking some of those thoughts tonight. And God has four words for you tonight, and it's this. You are not alone. And I'm not talking about you're not alone in your thinking of those thoughts, but rather, when you leave here tonight, graduates, you are never alone. When you leave this place, walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit because you were never meant to do it alone. And this is God's message for you tonight. You are not alone. Don't think for a moment that God would miraculously lead you to Rama, provide for you financially, lead you supernaturally, and empower you dynamically just to leave you on the steps of the Cox Business Center with nothing to do and nowhere to go. You are not alone. I love the Knox translation of Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says this, I have not lost sight of my plan for you, the Lord says, and it is your welfare I have in mind, not your undoing, for you too I have a destiny and a hope. You know, thank God for those that have gone before us. God is using them powerfully, but God is saying, for you too I have a destiny and a hope. You too, every one of you graduates. For you, Mary, and for you, Matt, for you, Sandra, for you, Gerald, for every one of us who are listening to God's Word tonight, for you too, God says, I have a destiny and I have a hope. Don't ever let those thoughts of inadequacy and I can't do this, I'm not good enough, don't ever entertain those thoughts. They don't come from God. They come from our own minds and they come from the devil. God has not forgotten you. And imagine with me, just like an air traffic control radar screen, God knows just where you're at. He sees your heart full of obedience, full of surrender. You're that bright blinking star on the radar of heaven, ready for your next assignment, ready for your next destination. 
God has not forgotten you. And I think about the Apostle Peter, how it began for him. Matthew chapter 4 tells us this, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. You know, being a fisherman in that day was a, was a common profession. Peter was just an ordinary person with an ordinary plan for his own life. But I want you to know, God had an extraordinary plan for his life. God makes a habit of taking ordinary individuals and placing a dream and a calling in their lives. Can I get a witness tonight? God takes you and me, ordinary people, people with inexperience, people with fears, people with inadequacies, and sets a seemingly impossible course for their lives. Let me talk about myself for just a moment. As a child, I was the most shy of all children. When I was a kindergartner, I couldn't even, ha- I didn't have enough confidence to raise my hand to, to, to let the teacher know that I didn't have a red crayon in my box. And, and as I grew older, you know, it wasn't so bad, but there was always a thread of timidity in my life. I remember I started singing in the church, I played piano, and I'd sit behind the piano. And you musicians can relate to this. And I'd sit behind the piano and play for myself. And I was so nervous that, that my foot would shake off the sustain pedal. And I'd just put it back on and nobody knew. And then, and then I graduated to standing behind a pulpit. And, and, but then I had to look at people's faces. And look at me. Here I am tonight. And I love what God spoke to young Jeremiah. This is one of those scriptures that I've always held, held on to because <laughs> in ministry you've got to look at people's faces, whether they're responsive or not. I remember my first year at Rama. There was a student by the name of Rudy Vertochnik. We were at the skating rink one day, and he says, Hey, do you want to go to jail with me tomorrow night? I said, Go to jail. And he knew I could play the piano and sing. And he said, yeah, let's go to jail. I'll preach and you sing. And I learned how to lead worship with a bunch of people who just stood there like this. Make me worship. And that's, that's how I got my start. But notice what God said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7. Do not say I am a youth. Can I amplify that a little bit? Don't say, I can't do that. For you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. And somebody might say, well, that's God's word to Jeremiah. No, that's God's word for you. Don't be afraid of their faces, for God is with you to deliver you. And so over the years, I progressed from, I could raise my hand and tell the teacher I didn't have a crayon in my box. And, you know, and I graduated to, 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 to doing other things. Don't miss the opportunities that fall across your path opportunities to do things that maybe you've never imagined. Don't miss out on those opportunities. And as I look back on what God has accomplished through my life, I'm so glad that I never took time to think. Let me explain what I'm talking about. With every opportunity that came my way, I simply said, sure, I can do that. Sure, I would love to do that. Some of you need to practice that tonight. Come on, say it after me. Sure, I can do that. Sure, I would love to do that. Call it naive or call it obedience. I would just, sure, I can do that. 
And God used that willingness to accomplish great things. Francois Bacon said this, a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. Think about that. Say yes to opportunities that come your way, especially after tonight, but at the same time, don't wait for opportunities to just fall into your lap. Get out there and make yourself available, and God will do great things in your life. Get out there and do the work of the ministry. Be a light. Make a difference in the world that God has put you in. Someone else said this, it's the man who waits for his ship to come in who's always missing the boat. Missed opportunities only bring regret. There may be some here tonight that are wondering, you know, I, I don't think I have what it takes. Do you think I can do it? Can I say this with all the love and respect I have? Who told you you could think? Our job is not to analyze the call of God on our lives. Our job is not to evaluate whether we think God's plan for our lives is valid or not. Our responsibility is to obey. I, I love Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Graduates, are you listening tonight? You are God's handiwork, His masterpiece, His design. God created you and uniquely fitted you with a special work. Your assignment is unique. Only you can accomplish that task. That's why it's unwise for us to compare ourselves to the other graduates around you. Don't compare yourself to other people. God made you different for a reason and on purpose. God created you to join Jesus in the work that he began, a work that you are to do through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I think about young Peter. He was, he was very passionate. He was willing to step out of the boat when others stayed in the boat. He was willing to speak his mind even when it resulted in the rebuke of his Lord. He even vowed to die with Jesus if that's what it came down to. Hours later, however, Peter came face to face with his frail humanity when he denied that he even knew Jesus. Imagine the depth of despair that Peter felt afterwards. While Jesus was willing to die on the cross, Peter could not even stand up and be counted with him. Imagine the fear that soon followed when he and the other disciples feared for their lives, not fully grasping what the future held for them. There may be some tonight who are wondering, will I have what it takes to stand up for Jesus, or will I be like Peter? What does the future hold for me? Will God be able to use me? And the answer is yes, most definitely yes. God will use you because he desires to use you. Think about that. Remember the days of the elementary playground where you desperately wanted someone to pick you to be on their team? I want you to know God is choosing every one of us tonight. He's saying, I want you on my team. I will anoint you to do what I designed you for. Graduates, are you listening to me? You are not the world's leftovers that God reluctantly decided to use. God has designed you to be used by Him. You are special. God did not walk through the animal shelter of ministry misfits and spot you in the corner. He did not look at you and feel sorry for you and decide to call you into the ministry. No, God handcrafted you to do a great work for Him. You are chosen by Him to make a big splash in this world. Believe it. Embrace it. Run with it. Somebody say, I'm special. I'm special. And despite the disappointments in his life, Peter was just where he needed to be. 
Peter came face to face with his humanity, learning the important lesson that without Jesus, I can do nothing but turn it around and make it positive. With Jesus, I can do all things. You are not alone. John chapter 13, verse 1 says this. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from the world to the Father, having loved his own that were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, Jesus rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. Jesus knew that he only had a few more moments with his disciples. Think about this. What lessons would Jesus want to impress upon his disciples one last time? What were the essential truths that they would need to take with them? And if you take time to study John 13 through the end of John's gospel, there's two primary areas of focus in Jesus' last words with his disciples, and number one, it was love. Number two, don't forget the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. If all you get tonight is, I'm supposed to love people, and don't forget the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you'll just remember those two things and the McDonald's story, you'll be okay. I think about my ministry experience. I, I started out in, in student ministry. Then I moved on to worship leading, and then, then more music ministry, you know, more than just worship leading. And then, and you know, and then, and then in music, sometimes you got to create things, and so I, I started doing some arranging and then writing dramas. And, and, and let me say, as I thought about this, I did all of that without a college degree. And then I moved on to pastoral ministry, premarital counseling, helping young couples before they got married, hospital visitations, crisis situations at the hospital, uh, ministry on the foreign field, leading a congregation as a senior pastor. And as I look back on it, remember, I went to Raymond when there was, a, there was a music group. There was kind of like a music track of classes. I didn't get to go to all the pastoral classes like you did. I had lots of holes in my training, but God still chose to use me. Don't you dare sit there for a moment and think, well, I don't have it all. I, I miss this, and, you know, I fell asleep in assembly, and I, I can't do this. And No, if God can use me, God is sure going to use you. Pastor Dan, what's been your secret to success? Dependence upon the Holy Spirit. That's why God wants to share with you a message tonight. You are not alone. Listen to the promises of Jesus regarding the Holy Spirit. These are the th words that he shared with his disciples because he knew his time was short. John 14, verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Those are the words of our Lord Jesus. And he went on to say in John 14, These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, as graduates, every one of you is already acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Aren't you thankful for that? He lives in you. He's already been at work in your life, but he's getting ready to take center stage in your life if you'll let him because you're not alone. There's nothing that you cannot do through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
There's nothing you can't overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 15, verse 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. But once again, turn it around positively. With you, I can do all things. You are never alone because every one of you as graduates, you're an extension of God's hand. You realize you're God's hand in the earth? You're God's feet in the earth? You're God's mouthpiece in the earth? You're never alone because God intended for you to go in the power of the Holy Spirit, not your own power. That's the greatest encouragement I can give you tonight. And this is, this is my key scripture I want to share with you tonight. John chapter 16, verse 7. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, it is to your advantage. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. You, as graduates, are leaving tonight with an advantage over the enemy. Oh, come on, that's not a place to get quiet. I said, as graduates, you are leaving tonight with an advantage over the enemy. You are not alone. You're leaving tonight better now than when you arrived on that first day of classes. In just a few moments... You're going to get up out of your seats. You're going to walk across the stage. You're going to receive your diploma of completion. Now just imagine with me. Let's use our imagination for just a moment. Just imagine, wouldn't it be great that as you left tonight and as Jesse and Al help you down the steps and you begin to walk on that red carpet with the white trim that they give each of you they're standing there with a box of thumb drives thumb drives that sounds pretty cool and they're they're standing there with a box of thumb drives and to each graduate they give a thumb drive on the thumb drive what's on the thumb drive pastor dan are you imagining with me You've got the personal cell numbers of Pastor and Mrs. Hagen. Not only that, that you've got the sermon notes from all the, the Rama Bible College faculty, their top 20 messages over the last 10 years. Is somebody getting excited with me? Not only that, you've got video highlights of your favorite classes, those highlights that you missed while you were sleeping in class because you had to work the night before just to survive while you're going through Rama. Not only that, seven steps to ministry success compiled by Dean Tad Gregrich. And it also has a GPS tracker that will lead you to the most receptive neighborhoods to preach the gospel in America. Full of international helps for world travel. A restaurant listing of all the Cracker Barrel restaurants in the nation. And for the rest of you, a a listing of Starbucks coffee all over the world. Wouldn't that be awesome? Where is it, Pastor Dan? Is it under the tables? No. You don't need any of those things because if you were to receive those things tonight, they would fade away. You've got a greater advantage. The truth is that you're leaving tonight with an advantage, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. He has come. He will help you. He will empower you. He will anoint you because Jesus said that he would. You are not alone. But let's imagine something that is real tonight. When you walk down these steps, you have the opportunity to take hands with the Holy Spirit tonight. You have the opportunity to renew your partnership with the greater one. Somebody say the greater one. You have the opportunity to say, dear Holy Ghost, here we go. Here I go into all the world empowered by you. 
I will walk with you. You will walk in me. This is a heaven-made partnership that Jesus attended the whole time. Thank God for the training you've received, but the best part is yet to come as you go in the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that you are not alone. And you have the opportunity to leave here tonight and say, I am not alone. Holy Spirit, you're in me. I will listen to you. I'm going to follow your lead. I will let you live big in me from this time forward. Some of you will leave this arena tonight and you've already got your vehicle packed. You've got your U-Haul bulging. You're packed and ready to leave and as you drive away tonight, you may appear to be alone, but I want you to know you're not alone. Some of you will begin your journeys in ministry tomorrow or the next week or in months to come, but know this, you're not alone. The excitement of tonight may fade and your fellow classmates will have moved on. But know this, you're not alone. Graduates of Rhema, when you stand in that new place of ministry, I want you to know you are not alone. Children's ministers, when you sit on the floor for the first time among that group of children to teach and to guide, you are not alone. Student ministers, when you stand before that group of students for the first time and those feelings of inadequacy begin to set in, I want you to know you are not alone. Worship leaders, when you stand before that group of worshipers and they look at you with disinterest in their eyes, know that you are not alone. And you sent ones, you ambassadors to foreign lands, when you move to that land with no friends, wondering to yourself, what am I doing here? What was I thinking? How will I ever learn the customs and the language of this people? They speak so fast. I want you to know you are not alone. Is anybody listening tonight? You supportive ministers, when you begin to serve and you make a difference in that church or ministry, doing the most undesirable acts of service, I want you to know you are not alone. And let's don't leave out the pastors. When you stand before that group of people, those people who may be excited and receptive to your message or not, whatever the case, know that you are not alone. You are not alone. And as I think back over my life, I'm thankful that I said yes to the opportunities. That's why I am here today. I'm thankful that I allowed God's creativity to flow through me. Don't ever say, I can't do that. Don't ever say, I'm not smart enough to do that. You are made in His image after His likeness. You are created in the image of your heavenly Father. How dare you say, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not able to do that. No, when you realize and get a revelation on the inside that you are not alone, the the sky's the limit for the things that God will do through your life. I just believe that God could use me and flow through me. And I just learned I'm never alone. Pastor Dan, you must be just nervous tonight. No, because I realize I'm not alone. Psalm 136 is a passage of Scripture referred to as a responsive psalm. The first part of the verse was sung by the Levites. The second part was a response from the people. How many remember Psalm 136 where it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. And it goes on to say, oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endures. And it goes on for 26 verses. Well, I want to do a version of that tonight, kind of like a responsive psalm. But I want to have you as the graduates, you as the spouses, children, parents, and friends, the faculty and leadership of Rhema Bible Training College, And even those who may be looking down from heaven tonight, from the grandstands of heaven, that great cloud of witnesses, I want you all to repeat these words, you are not alone.
Let's do it one more time. You are not alone. alone. Graduates, would you stand with me tonight? Even when you don't know where to begin, even during those times when you're fearful for your life, when you feel like giving up and you think, what's the use? When you think to yourself, Lord, this is too hard. How can I go on? When you proclaim the good news to lost humanity, when you lay hands on that sick person, when you stand before kings and dignitaries of other nations, when you feel like you can't, whatever God has called you to, when the powers of darkness cry out and try to intimidate you, wherever God sends you, whatever your assignment from God is, whatever your destination, come on, say it with me. I am not alone. I am not alone. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voices, give praise to God. You are not alone. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Dan. You can be seated, students, graduates. That was tremendous. I remember as an incoming student, Dan on the platform leading us in worship, I was one of those. Make me worship. Sorry, Dan. Before we present the graduating class of 2017, I want to draw your attention to these two tables situated on the platform. You'll notice that we do not have traditional diploma covers up here, but instead we have red and black relay batons. The red batons will be given to our second year graduates and the black batons to our third, uh, third year program graduates. Let me assure our graduates and their parents that The diplomas are upstairs ready to be given to them after the ceremony. The reason we are giving these students or these graduates tonight the batons is due in part to a message that our our school president, Reverend Kenneth W. Hagan, delivered to the student body during a class orientation in 2002. In that message, President Hagan traced the history of revival down through every generation and challenged each student to carry the baton of revival to this present generation. This evening when each graduate comes to the platform, they will receive a baton that symbolizes their commitment to take their place in the end time revival and carry the message they have received at Raymond to their generation. The inscription on the baton reads, I commit to carry the baton of revival to this generation. I will carry the banner of faith and God's power to a lost and dying world. This is my time to do all God has called me to do. At this time, as our, as our uh, instructors and those come forward to be ready, with the entire 2017 second year graduating class of Raymond Bible Training College, please stand. It is now my privilege to present to Dr. Kenneth W. Hagen, the president of Raymond Bible Training College, and Dr. Lynette Hagen, the director of Raymond Bible Training College, this second year graduating class comprised of 185 students. These students have completed Raymond's ministerial training course, complied with all the requirements necessary for this honor, and we bestow upon them these privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will the graduate, second year graduates please be seated. At this time, we have two students, Gerald Oliver and Mary Oliver, who are not able to negotiate the stairs to the platform. So Dr. Kenneth W. Hagen, president of the school of Rama, will at this time present their batons to them.
Will the first two rows of the graduating second year students please stand and come forward at this time to receive your batons. Once again, I'm obligated to please ask that all, the, uh, all of you in the audience please hold your applause until all the names have been read, but I know you will not listen to me. There you go. Isaiah Joel Hernandez. Andrew Michael Fee. Robin Angela Jenkins. King Nopron Kudabali. Aramis Isaac Jenkins. Fabiana Liniares. Bogdan Bychuk. Thiago Liniares. Sandra Sundy. Eben Cleophus Jones. Sandra Elaine Campbell. Anthony Nolan. Darwin Dario Hernandez Sanchez. Theodora Fritz Jemison. Bethlehem M. Araya. Sandra Lee Sheldon. Jewel Marie Friesen. Bridget Ann Campelson Ocon. Ruyel Rye. Drake Kalani Pua. Jacqueline Eileen Bell. Eliza Viola Malia Pua. Josiah Lee Stewart. Mark Allen Mercer. Brittany Madison Waite. Linda Renee Mercer. Whitley Rebecca Bohr. Katrina, Mar Katrina Maria Skefos. Whitney Annalise Horn. Thomas David McDonnell. Ashley Grace Gentry. Jared Joseph Oshevig. Sandra Ann Caparelli. Andrew William Tigner. David G. French. Jordan Rebecca Wade. Christine Larie Borland. Nakia Rochelle Maplethorpe. David Austin. Aaron Elizabeth Watson. John Lester Bacon. Krista Ann Wynn. Thomas Willens Byerly. Julie Renee Shore. Derek Allen Bebout. Charles Hammond Shore, Jr. Willie Don DeShields. Brian Heath Malonson. Scott Richard Jasperson. Tiffany Marie Simmons. Amy Renee Howard. Iron Angel Ramos. Austin Charles Howard. Samuel Josiah Rogers. Dustin Scott Jenkins. Rebecca Lynn Moore. Desiree Don Jenkins. Houston Thomas Purcell. Trenton James Fletcher. Brandon Noah Stowers. Jessica Lee Fletcher. Christopher Maurice White. Jody Lynn Halseth. Robin Yvette Ruffin. Brian Allen Halseth. Stephanie Ann Lovelett. Brittany Christine Brown. Anna Elizabeth White. Kelsey Renee Goats. Keith Andrew Pavarud. Candace Ann Cummings. Megan Nicole Nider. Cheyenne Francesca Johnson. Kaylee Cheyenne Resch. Jessica Lynn Carl. Olia K. Lowry. Rebecca Irma Joy Crabtree. Joyful Angel Munoz. Brittany Elizabeth Barnt. David Lynn Smashy. Anna Joy Rebecca Crabtree. Samuel James Lee. Linda Jill Brown. Rayma Lynn Francis. Alyssa May Hunt Luthold. Kamar Cornell Smith. 
Alexis Marie Baker. Brandy Eunice Smith. Jackson Lee Baker. Evelyn Camarillo. Amanda Rebecca Cox. Jeremiah Samaniego. Anastasia Hope Cuff. Daryl Maurice Morris, Jr. Abraham Scott Harder. Kaylee Lauren McNeff. Abigail Joy Harder. Manina Sipastaki Shaw. Jennifer Lynn Hendricks. Mallory Celeste Rodriguez. Evan Durrell Clark. Allison Jane Snodgrass. Aaron David Hayes. Jonathan Isaiah Salazar. Trevor Allen Delano. Jared Allen Massey. Christopher William DeLay. Isaiah Dijon Smith. Tanner William Gregrich. Terrence Lamont Shivers. Ian Thomas Brock. Kenneth Thomas Truitt. Matthew Charles Giso. Chadwick Elmore Winston. Tanner Darius Delph. Brendan Dale Running Wolf. Grannon Jade Clark. Alyssa May Luthold. Chantel Yvonne Barnes. Rebecca Suzanne McCarroll. Trelinda Joanne Crook. Mervyn Reed Lucy. Margie T. Fair. Rocky J. Lowen. John Penner Fair. Rodney A. Sneed. Elsina Nicolette Armstrong. Katie Nicole Irene Sneed. Yaffa Pearl Hunter. Rayma Praise Penrod. Ashley Patrice Hill. Samantha Michelle Rose. Elena Olivia Daniel. Ian Donovan Rose. Pearl Emily Cash. Jeanette Elaine Simpson. Faith Marie Neyo. Amber Renee Landry. Natalie Marie Crow. Raina Elizabeth Wall. Penny Joe Crow. Melissa Joe McClarty. Jonathan Andrew Elliott. Amanda Casey Moe. Lainey Nicole Gonzalez. Shana Nicole Milby. Mason Suzanne Green. Lindsay Nicole Pena. Jesse Austin Harrison. Alicia Ann Younger. Jan Zanade Henderson. Anthony Alexander Waters. Laura Ann Day. Alexandra Jordan Page. Betsy Ellen DeCoste. Rayma Ashley Smithwick. Robert Shannon Fife. Kaylee Elaine Trexler. Kevin LaFoy Howell. Mary Ellen Rui. Ravenna Gail Brown. Ariel Christina Monks. Jory Dean Jewett. Linda K. Monks. Heather Josette Cooney. Afrenetta Lachey Onyamachi. Kaylee Ray Harz. Ronald Machado Da Silva Jr. Jared Lee Fallecker. Gerald L. Thompson. Bethany Sean Didier. Bruce Allen Price. Christian James Duca. Hunter Madison Bierman.
At this time, will the entire 2017 graduates of our third year programs from Raymond Bible Training College please stand? In 1999, Rama started its first third-year program. There are now eight programs available to provide intensive ministerial training. These programs are identified by the different colored stoles the, these graduates are wearing this evening. The program in colors are identified as follows. Biblical Studies, purple. General Extended Studies, white. Helps Ministry, teal. Itinerant Ministry, gray. Pastoral Ministry, red. Student Ministries, light blue. Worship ministry pink world missions gold it is now my privilege to present to president dr kenneth w hagan and director dr lynette hagan the third year grad graduating class 2017 comprised of 85 students these 85 students have satisfactorily completed the third year training course in their selected field and have complied with all the requirements necessary for this honor we thus bestow upon them the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto with the third year students, please come forward and receive your batons. <laughs> Frankie Jean. Timotope Emmanuel Aini. Jonathan Neil Daniel. Gwenael Olivia Quinn. Jeffrey David Forrester. Samuel Aid Colta Salem. Jonathan Bruno. Matafadza Nayamuda. Taylor Lee Alford. Roxanne G. Agrin. Ariel LaPearl Henton Shaw. Gary Al Owen Palmer. John Jacob. Cheryl Valentina Palmer. Carol Jean Franzen. Cruz Ranero. Brian Jeffrey Harvey. Christy Lynn Sabatula. Sonny Cantaniere Evangelista. Tara Marie Steen. Yvette Denise Benyon. Wilma Fiona Larrier. Megan Elise Day. Jennifer Ann Popowich. Jason Allen Crow. Teresa Lynn Naiman. Mary Davies. Kent Lee Reif. Rachel Renee Livingston. Amber Lee Yuskali. Emily Sue Korn. Michael William Rowe. Johanna Joy Erickson. <laughs> Hannah Bell Lambert. Samuel James Henderson. Meskram Bekela Marcos. Bailey Nicole Bodine. Lisa Louise Miller. Robin Lynn Fletcher. Antonio Dwayne Summers. Nicholas Ross Balco. Joshua Robert Flochini. Devin Patrick Beacom. Morgan Riley Young. Francis Andrea Krenitsen. Megan Catherine Moore. Kathy Maria Claude. Kagan Renee Stevens. David Joshua McKinney. Jennifer Dominique Kulu Kulu Halani. <laughs> Melissa K. Mitchell. <laughs> Sophia Lorraine Rycraw Lee. <laughs> Anthony Jordan Mitchell. <laughs> Riley Teresita Zeski. <laughs> Ilya Alexandrovich Galenko. <laughs> Brett Nathaniel Weston. Loretta Anderson. Santosh Sharma. Jeanette Jean Jablonski. Adam Garcia Leos. Benjamin Stanley Hamlin. Caleb Joseph Richards. Carrie Ann Alexis Alfieri. Allison Renee Henricks. 
Dallas Nehemiah Doku. Nicholas Germain Terry. Eric Thomas Strelo. Joshua Gabriel Ocone. Barry Leo Wilcox. Kennard James Warwick. Lamira Renee Marshall. Cornell Keith Nicholson. Jeanette Sunday. Isaac Anton Wangler. Johanna Lynn Hunt. Kingsley Nayarigo Wokoma. Mario Alonzo Gonzalez. Christina Lee Seavers. Rachel Eve Warwick. Zebulon John Bell. Brittany Morgan Crabtree. Jonathan Paul Crabtree. Will the entire graduating class of 2017 please stand? <laughs> On behalf of President Kenneth W. Hagan and Director Lynette Hagan, all the faculty and staff of Raymond Bible Training College, our Board of Advisors, it is now my privilege and honor to present to you the entire graduating class of 2017. Graduates, you may now move your tassels. <laughs> graduates, you may be seated. We would ask that all of the friends and relatives of our graduates please remain in the arena after the benediction until all the graduates have left the arena. Thank you, and you'll see why as that takes place. At this time, the president of Raymond Bible Training College, Dr. Kenneth W. Hagan, will now present the charge to this class. As I stand before you for one last time as your president, many of you, I will stand before after this, as the head of your ministerial association and in other capacities. Tonight, remember what Dan said, you're not alone. Whether you go into a full-time ministry position or whether you go into a helps position where you work a job and work at a church, or whether God puts you in the workplace, you're not alone. God needs people in every walk of life, not just preachers and teachers and, and, and helpers in the church. He needs ministers. And I've got, as all of you know, I have a book called Every Member a Minister, and every member is a minister. Whether they ever preach a message or not, they're a minister. Wherever they're at, they are a minister. And tonight, I charge you to be true to the things that you have been taught. As you prepare to embark upon your journey that God has for you, I know no better way to charge you than by reading Scripture. But how can they call on, on Him to save them unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is what the scripture means when they say, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. He's the one who gave gifts to the church. 
the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ, until we all come in such unity in our faith and our knowledge of God, Son, that we'll be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Here's a trustworthy saying, if anyone sets his heart to being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, husband but one wife, temperate, self-control, respectable, hospital, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, but a lo- not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well. See that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not resent. Uh, he must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have good reputation out with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace, into the devil's trap. You then, my son, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, be strong in the grace, and I'm speaking it to you, and that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust them to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others, endure hardship, with us like good soldiers of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similar if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. Keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only runs, ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of, pure, out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience carefully instruct. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of the ministry. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you are called when you, were made, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Be the shepherd of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. 
And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And last of all, I leave you with the words from Mark's gospel. He said to them, go throughout the whole world, preach the gospel to all mankind. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in strange tongues. If they pick up snakes or drink any poison, they will not be harmed. They will place their hands on the sick people and these will get well. The scripture I have read carries several to ministers, but it's also to those that may not find themselves in a ministry position, but find themselves in a helps position. The same thing that applies to the one that stands behind this desk applies to everyone that serves in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Congratulations. You're not alone. Now go do what you were called to do. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the 2017 class of Raymond Bible Training College. But Father God, we thank you that the celebration is over and it's time for these graduates to take the baton of revival to a lost and dying and hurting world. Help them take the mandate that they've been given to go teach my people faith to the uttermost parts of the earth. And Father God, we thank you that in times of trouble, in times of trial, when, when the devil is beating down on them, that they will remember tonight's message that Reverend Dan ministered, that they're not alone, that they're, that they're not by themselves, but, but you're there with them each and every time. You're there helping them. You're there leading them. You're there guiding them. You're, you're there helping in, in every situation and help them remember that they are the fearless class. Help them remember that God has not given us a, a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind. And we thank you, Father, for the many exploits that the class of 2017 shall do. We thank you, Father, for the many people that will be saved, the many people that will be healed, the many lives will be transformed as these 2017 graduates go and join the other 60,000 around the world teaching faith. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done tonight and everything you are doing both here and around the world. We pray over the next days and, and months as, as these graduates and their families um, travel back to where they've came from. We thank you, Father, for protecting them them, helping them, guiding them, and leading them. And we thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of these graduates, and they will fulfill that plan and purpose. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, are you ready to sing our school song as a graduate now? I know it's going to be more to you now and in the times that in the future as you sing this song it means the world amen let's all sing it together here we go standing here today in your will divine i'm reflecting back to a precious time i was trained so that to the world i could go Rayma taught me what i needed to know Never this 
people, to the peoples of the earth, to the whole world knows the power of your name. May your healing flow through us. May we sing a song of joy to the nations, a song. Yo, yo. 